Another way to show frequencies is by graphing the cumulative frequency plot. And here we display the data values along the x-axis and the percentage of observations below that value on the y-axis. So across the x-axis here, we've got data values. And across the y-axis, we've got the percentage of observations that have a value less than this data value. So in this case, this first red line shows us that for, data, for a data value of 209, which is over here, there are exactly, that crosses over here, whoops, there are 40% of the observations, 40% of the observations have a data value below 209. Over here, if we go across from the 90% to the blue graph over here and draw a line down, over here, we see that 90% of observations have a data value below 330. Let's make the cumulative frequency plot for our data set that we had before. So just going back to this data set, we've got 3, 6, 10, 9, 5, 2. 3, 6, 10, 9, 5, 2. That's our frequencies, and our x values were 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The first thing that we're going to have to do is sum up the cumulative, uh, make a cumulative sum of our frequencies. So here we've, we're going to have CS for cumulative sum. And what we are, so how many values how many observations do we have with a value of 0 or less? The answer is simply 3. How many observations do we have with a value of 6 or less? Sorry, a value of 1 or less. Well, we've got these 6 over here, which have a value of 1, and we've got the 3 up above. So we've got 9. How many have a value of 2 or below? Now we have to add 10 to the sum, 19. And here we have 28, 33, and 35. So when we draw a plot, let's do it instead of percentage, but we'll just do the actual, the, the cumulative sum across the left-hand side and our data values across the bottom. So we've got uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And when we get to 5, we know we're going to be at 35. So let's go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's say this over here is 35. So each graph unit here is five frequency units. So zero is three, about over here. One is six, about over here. Two is 10, sorry. Oh, I've made a mistake. One is nine. Two is nineteen. Five, ten, fifteen, nineteen. Three is twenty-eight. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, twenty-eight. And four is thirty-three. So the cumulative frequency plot is going to look something like that. OK, what about graphing bivariate frequencies? So in this plot called a scattergram, or I'll often call it a scatter plot, each observation is plotted on a Cartesian plane with the axes defined by the two variables. So we're always going to have a y variable on the vertical axis and an x variable on the horizontal axis. 
And this plot is very useful for discovering if there's a relationship between the two variables. So in this case, we see that the, that the variables seem to increase in size at the same time. As x increases, we see that the value of y increases as well. And therefore, that gives us some intuition that these two variables are related to one another. Let's have some practice making one of these plots. When we have a scatter plot, we always start with two variables, an x variable and a y variable. And we can have values. I'm just going to make them up here. 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 3, Five. So here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six observations in total. Now let's draw our plot. This is x, and this is y. Let's start with the, let's put zero and zero over here. And let's say this is one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. Now let's plot our observations. The first one is at zero, zero. So the first dot is going to go where x equals zero and where y equals zero, right at the origin. The second dot, one, two, is, has an x equals one, so it's over here, and we're going to go up to y equals two. Then we've got a one, one, and a 2, 3, and a 3, 2, and a 3, 5. So our scatter plot looks like this. While we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points in this plot, it seems pretty clear that these two variables are also related to each other.